So let's start with the monsters because there's so much to love. First, the designs are fantastic. The battle animations are charming and the explorabilities of the monsters add so much character to this Metroidvania plus monster taming crossover. I'm a pretty big fan of pixel art, but even looking through the monster journal shows amazing interpretations of these monsters that I can't get enough of. The monsters also feel grounded in reality while still being fun, fictional depictions of everyday animals and mythical creatures. My trusty Spectral Wolf, my dark shifted Magma Moth, and my light shifted Tar Goat will always have a place in my heart, so please excuse me while I spend a few hours reading each monster journal entry in depth. I love the unique evolution requirements, the viability of monsters from early game to the end game, and story inspired boosts to your monsters called shifts that all create a unique progression system for your monsters that tie in so well to the story, the strategy based gameplay, and add a ton of replay value. Some questions that came up during my gameplay were do you evolve a monster and risk the chance of losing a skill that's crucial to your strategy in boss fights? With limited shift stones, how do you decide which monsters get shifted? Do you really have the heart to take out your day one blob from your main rotation? The abundance of choices are so much fun to work through, and I'm excited to see which combinations I use in the future runs of the game. Monster Sanctuary uses a 3v3 battle system that focuses on synergy amongst team members, and the game heavily focuses on team building with respect to monster attacks and skills. Boss battles allow you to utilize 6 total monsters, but you can only have 3 on the field at one time. Other players might feel more familiar with 3v3 battles, but very few of the games I play utilize this gameplay choice and it works exceedingly well on Monster Sanctuary. Halfway through the game, on normal difficulty, managing 3 monsters at a time is manageable, but boss fights in higher difficulty prove to be a lot more challenging as the game goes on. Related to the 3v3 system are the addicting skills trees that each monster can build throughout the game. For each level that you earn, your monster gains one skill point, and some skills are only accessible after reaching a certain level or learning a prerequisite skill, and I love slowly building a team that have matching skills and synergy. When monsters hatch, they have a number of skill points that match their current level, so you can quickly build out that monster skill tree, Unfortunately, I ended up building a team focused on shields, status moves, and generally frowned upon stall tactics, but the team was a blast to use and I'm looking forward to using more offensive teams as time goes on and in future runs. Speaking of future runs, I flew through my first campaign and I'm looking forward to revisiting the game with all the knowledge of my first playthrough. Monster Sanctuary features randomizer, permadeath, and bravery settings in addition to a new game plus mode. And I'm really looking forward to playing this game again with added difficulty and new monsters at different stages of the game. Also, the permanent feature reminds me of playing Fire Emblem and I've never played a randomizer playthrough of any game so I seriously can't wait. Oh, and you also get access to the Forgotten World DLC after completing a few in-game requirements and since the area is a late game edition, it's slightly recommended you wait until beating the game to explore the Forgotten World. Overall, the amount of content and replayability available in this game is admirable and a really great job to this development team. Monster Sanctuary is not the easiest game in the monster taming genre, and the challenge the game gives its players makes it really special. Some players might feel like they are drinking from a fire hose learning about the types, strengths, weaknesses, buffs and debuffs, combos, the 1 through 5 rating on your battle execution, and some boss battles are over before you even know what happens, and I absolutely love it. If we put monster taming games on a scale to measure difficulty, Pokemon Let's Go would be on the easy side, and Monster Sanctuary would be towards the challenging end of that same scale. But once you find a strategy, or strategies that work for you, the challenge feels fair and rewards players for thinking strategically about the best ways to take on puzzles, champion fights, or even keeper duels. And the music is absolutely fantastic. If you're a person who enjoys listening to music from games that you enjoy playing, you likely have replayed this music over and over again. Even my wife, who doesn't typically comment on the games I play, she happened to be in the background while I was playing through Monster Sanctuary and she stopped to ask me if it would be possible for her to listen to the soundtrack. It's really that good. Each area has a distinct sound that fits with the overall feel of the game, matches the story and pacing of the game so well, and provides a sense of immersion to the world that elevates each battle, conversation, and new discovery. A few songs that stand out to me are Mystical Workshop, the unused demo version though, Snowy Peaks, and I do like the final boss battle tune. If you're interested in listening to the soundtrack, you can stream it on Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Music. And of course, let me know your favorite tracks down below in the comments. The map design is such an important part of the game since exploration and travel are essential components of a Metroidvania game. And Monster Sanctuary excels at creating biomes that are a joy to explore, expertly utilize your monsters to traverse the area, 
and have a mix of puzzles that are rewarding and fun to complete. The map areas are manageable in size and I haven't felt like I'm running around in circles trying to find the next key item. There are some puzzles I haven't been able to complete and some areas on the map that seem inaccessible, but now that I've completed the game, I look forward to finding the specific monsters or items I need to explore 100% of the map. Both the music and map design are greatly enhanced by the overall graphics of the game, which are 2D pixel art. I do want to note that the pixel art is gorgeous and complements the monsters well, but what I love about this art style is the combination of music, tone, and map design that all work so well together. The combination of the elements give us an art direction that has more than the sum of its parts, and gives it a unique flavor compared to other monster taming games that use pixel art. It also seems like we're in the middle of the great age of pixel art monster taming games. Monster Sanctuary is a game that truly understands the type of experience it wants to give to the player. It implements core gameplay mechanics of a monster tamer and Metrovania extremely well and offers players so much value no matter what console you play it on. We have so many aspects of the game that we love and we're really excited for our complete review of the game to come out. We're also really excited to check out the upcoming Aethermancer, a monster tamer meets roguelite that promises to share many of the positive aspects of Monster Sanctuary and comes from the same development team. Let us know down below your 7 favorite things about Monster Sanctuary. Is it the gameplay mechanics, monsters, or something that we didn't list? And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more monster taming content.